All rise. I want viewers watching my show to believe in themselves. Judge Hatchet is compelling. I was not the first one to throw a walk. Let me just tell you what you just said. Compassionate. I really enjoy being a judge. Now I am touching people who I will never know I touched. She's powerful. You should have never let them walk out of your life when she was three. And she's on the bench. Don't get me preaching up in here today. Right. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchet. Karina Barrett is suing Jerry Costello in the amount of $500. Ms. Barrett claims Mr. Costello broke her car window to get her dog because he thought her dog was in danger. Mr. Costello claims the plaintiff's car window would not have been broken if she didn't leave her dog unattended. All rise. Court is now in session with the Honorable Judge Hatchett presiding. Ma'am. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Good day, Ms. Barrett. You are suing Mr. Costello for $500. Yes. And you're saying basically he owes you that because he busted a window in your car. Yes, Your Honor. So tell me what happened. So basically, um, we're here today revolving my baby, Chloe. No, I might not have any real children. Chloe is my dog, but she is my everything. I am her mother. No one can convince me that she is not my child. I actually have a picture of her, if that would be okay for me to show you Absolutely. as part of my evidence. She's the cutest toy poodle you've ever seen in your life. I'm telling you, she is my everything. And the reason Just, I'm smiling is because I have a cousin who has a dog named Chloe, and that's exactly how she describes her relationship with she's Chloe. She's just so cute. Like, she's my baby. I love her more than anything. So, regardless of what Mr. Costello may try to say about me today, I just want you to know that I love this dog more than I love most things in life. Like, any boyfriend I've ever had knows that he comes second to Chloe because she is my everything. Okay, so this is a picture of Chloe. Yes, it is. All right, so let's all look at Chloe. Isn't oh. she cute? Look at her eyes and her nose. I mean, she's, she's the most adorable thing she in the world. She is adorable. I must admit, she's adorable. So why are you suing Mr. Costello for So <laughs> the reason um, that I'm suing Mr. Costello or how he even got involved with me and Chloe's relationship in the first place, I was out shopping. We had gone to a lot of different places that day. Both Chloe and I were understandably exhausted because we had gone to so many different stores. I was having a barbecue that weekend with some friends and I had forgotten the marshmallows that we were going to use to have the bonfire later during the barbecue. So I had to stop at one final store. Like I mentioned, Chloe's a little anxious. She hadn't been properly house trained prior to when I take, took her in. And so because she was a little anxious around people, when I take her into public settings, sometimes she does wet herself. Is the, this a long way of telling me you left her in the car? I did have to leave her in the car, yes, but I did open all the windows. I made sure the sunroof was cracked. I left a little bowl of water in there. I left a pad in case she had to use the bathroom, and I was only going to stay in the store a couple minutes. I ran in literally to get the marshmallows. It did take me a little longer than I wanted because there's a man in the front wasting time with his card being declined. It, it was an annoying line, but I was in and out within five minutes. I get out the wait, store. Wait, wait, you were in and out of the store within five minutes. You got everything you needed. The line was held up because a man's card was declined. Yes. And you were still out of the store in five minutes? It really wasn't long at all. I don't remember the exact time period. I may be a little exaggerating, but I promise yeah, it, it was not. Like a lot I literally just had to grab a bag of marshmallows. I mean, I've been in lines when people's cards have been declined and it's just over and over. So what happened? Let's go back to the store. So the man gets his card declined. He did have to swipe his card a few times. It wasn't going through. I did see him pull out his phone, I'm assuming, to check his bank account, maybe to transfer money. I'm not exactly sure what he was doing. It did take a little bit of time, but it wasn't anything insanely obnoxious. Mr. It was Castello, annoying. Let's, let's talk to you. Tell me, how did you get involved? How did you ever know the plaintiff? First of all, Your Honor, I love dogs. I have a profound love for them. I saw this dog once. I went to a store as well. I, I just can't stand people leaving their dogs in their cars. That's so you had seen Chloe in the car before the date that we're talking about yes. now. So tell me about that. Uh, that day, I, I saw the dog. She was still fine. I went to the store, and when I came back, that was about 15 minutes. Okay. 
Chloe was still there. She wasn't there. I saw her coming from the store, and I tried to talk to her about Chloe, but she completely ignored me and just drove away. Okay, so now let's go to the second time. The second time. What happened? I went again. I went to the store and I saw the car. I can, I could recognize it, and I saw Chloe again. She was breathing heavily, but she was still fine. And was I thought, was it hot outside? Of course. Coming up on the verdict with Judge Hatchett. The police came and she got me arrested. What? So clearly the police agreed with me that he broke yelling into at my them, car. Telling them that they have to do something. I saved the dog and she just got me arrested. Your Honor, to me that doesn't look like a man saving the day. That looks like a man who broke into my car. And later. It's only one hour out of the day, the session. I see my and daughter. And you could make that happen. Every other weekend. One hour is nothing out of a whole and entire weekend. And it's 45 weekend. minutes away from my house. Closed captioning provided by... The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Karina Barrett, who is suing Jerry Costello for property damage. I went to the store. When I walked out of the store, Chloe was still there, and I saw a lot of people around the car. I looked uh, through the window. Chloe was breathing heavily. She wasn't there. She was about to die. So I went to, the, to my car. I had a bat in my car, and I went back to her car, and I tried to break the window a couple of times. It was really hard to do it. When I did it, I opened the door and I took Chloe outside of the car. She was breathing heavily. It, she needed water. She was she probably afraid. Air. She, I she, told you Chloe's very then anxious around strangers. She came out and she was yelling at me, saying that I was trying to kidnap her dog, to take her dog away. He I, broke I into my car life. and removed I my saved dog. I her life. Clearly, you were gone in the store long enough for a group of people to gather around your car. People aren't going to come and cheer him on for breaking a window, they're gonna be looking and cheering him on because as I understand it from your testimony, there was a crowd already gathered when you walked to the car. Yes. And the point I want you to understand, Ms. Barrett, is that a crowd wouldn't gather in five minutes. It seems to me that you should be thanking him. Do you not see that? I'm saying that I would never do anything to endanger Chloe's life ever, but even if he wants to prove that I maybe wasn't being as attentive to her as I should have. The windows were open. The sunroof was open. How did he have to the shatter my door or my window this, to get like into my car? Less than an inch the sunroof was open fully. There so was, I feel like he could have reached into was, the well, car. Well, first of all, why would you leave the sunroof open fully so that somebody could just reach in and steal Chloe? to give her air because I did have to run into the store. There was no way that I could take her home before going to the store. If the sunroof was all the way open, then somebody before Mr. Costello got there could have reached in and gotten her. So to me that says maybe the crowd didn't get there before he had already gotten there. And if the sunroof was open, how come nobody else decided to try to reach in before he broke the because window? Because I don't think the sunroof was open wide enough. I think that the windows were probably cracked enough to let a little air in, but I don't think a responsible dog owner would leave the windows down far enough that they could just reach in, unlock the door, and I can't imagine him going and getting a bat if the sunroof was wide open. That makes no sense to me. That was not the only thing. The police came and she got me arrested. What? So clearly the police agreed with me that he broke yelling into at my them, car. Telling them that they have to do something. I, I saved the dog and she just got me arrested. Your Honor, if you look at the evidence that I provided you with, you can see my car window is shattered. There's glass everywhere. To me, that doesn't look like a man saving the day. That looks like a man who broke into my car. So yes, I called the police and they obviously agreed with me. Let's, let's look at this. There are no open windows, particularly on that side. I just said all the windows were cracked open. And then you had the nerve to call the police? Yes, on this because man? my car was broken. So into. let's think about this. Let's think about this. If Mr. Costello was trying to break into your car, why would he go to his car, get a bat in front of all these witnesses yeah. if he was doing something illegal? Why would he do it? when there are all these witnesses. I honestly don't know his motivation. All I know is that my car was broken into and my car window is shattered and my dog is frightened. I have to save a dog. 
I just feel like that's not I, his decision if it to make wasn't to for break me, into a Chloe car. Chloe will be dead, and she'll she'll be dealing with another thing. You left this dog in a hot car. People gathered because they were concerned. This man comes and does what he thinks is right to get this dog out of the car, and then you call the police. When you were arrested, what happened? I had to pay about a thousand for the court fines. They took me to prison. Miss Barrett, do you not feel that you should thank him for breaking into my car? For no, saving I don't. No, for saving my dog. For saving my dog from what? I was back oh. in and out the store within a matter of minutes. So my dog of, wasn't dying. I, 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 that lie is not working in here. Mm. It was not a matter of minutes. You need to get a grip on this. It was not a matter of minutes. Now, maybe Chloe would have survived, but maybe she wouldn't have. We don't know. But what I do know is that the windows were not cracked. I do know that you were in that store longer than a few minutes. And you know what? If you don't have enough sense to realize that you owe this man a deep debt of gratitude, I'm going to make it really clear. Because instead of you getting $500, you're going to pay Mr. Costello $1,100 for him having to go through the hell that he went through by you calling the ah, You know, $1,500. I am ordering that the plaintiff pay Mr. Costello $1,500 and your claim is denied because you are being stubborn and hard-headed and instead of having this man arrested, you should be thanking him. Judgment for the defendant of $1,500. So ordered. There you go. All rise. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff has been ordered to pay the defendant $1,500. I guess I was in the store a little longer than I thought, but you still overreacted when you broke into my car. Maybe Chloe would have survived without me, but I was not going to take that chance. Coming up. It's only one hour out of the day, the session. I see my and daughter. And you couldn't I make that daughter. happen? Every other weekend. One hour is nothing out of a whole and entire weekend. And it's 45 weekend. minutes away from my house. Soraya Hill is suing Jamal Garrison in the amount of $350. Ms. Hill claims Mr. Garrison agreed to take their daughter to weight loss sessions, but when it was time to take her, he refused. Mr. Garrison claims he doesn't owe the plaintiff anything because getting a trainer was her choice. Ms. Hill, to Garrison, you all have a dispute that you unfortunately could not work out. And from what I gather from the complaint, this has always been a situation where you always have been able to work through any of the issues. That you have a child in common, although you were never married, um, but you now have gotten to a point where you find it necessary to sue Mr. Garrison. Why? I'm suing my daughter's father for training sessions that I paid for for our daughter. What kind of training sessions? Workout training sessions. And um, he agreed to take her to the training sessions, but he neglected to take her to the training sessions. So I have to sue him today for the money that I'm out of. So back up. Why was it, uh, why did you decide that you were going to put your daughter in these training sessions? I want to know the background of this, and then I want to hear from you, Mr. Garris. When she became 12 and got in the sixth grade where the kids started to be, they started to ridicule her and make fun of her and tease her. And she came to me and told me that, and I decided to put her in the training sessions with me. We worked out together. Um, we did 24 sessions, and he was supposed to take her to 12, and I was supposed to take her to 12. We have joint custody, so um, he would have her every other weekend. So that's how we worked out the agreement. He agreed to take her to the sessions, and that was that. Mr. Garrison, what yeah. happened? My daughter would come to me every other weekend. Right. And she really did not like the trainer. I would, I asked her one morning, we woke up, I never forget, it was a Saturday morning, uh, we woke up late and I was supposed to take her and I was like, you ready to go? And she was like, daddy, I don't wanna go there. I wanna go bike riding, like, like what you do, I go bike riding every weekend. And so we went riding bikes on the beach for like three hours. So I felt like that was a workout in itself. Coming up. It's only one hour out of the day, the session. I see my and daughter, you couldn't I make see my that daughter. Happen. 
every other weekend. One hour is nothing out of a whole and entire weekend. And it's 45 weekend. minutes away from my house. The verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Soraya Hill, who is suing Jamal Garrison for $350. But what did you promise Miss Hill you would do? I, I would take her to the actual... So that there were 24 sessions mm -hmm. and that you would take her to the 12? Yes, and out of that 12, I took her to two. Just the fact that she wasn't comfortable there. At the same time, Your Honor, we will work out. Well, why not say that to Miss Hill to say, look, on the weekends that I have her, what you said is I will take her. Why not just pick up the phone and call Miss Hill and say, hey, you know, I'd like to do it differently on my weekends. Instead of going to the gym, why don't you spread these out, these 24 weeks out, take my weeks, you all continue to go, but on my weekends, let me tell you what we're going to do. We're going to bike, we're going to hike, and then give her a log of the things that you did in the alternative. Would that not have made more sense than was, just not going? True, but at the same time, with her, it's so hard. She's always want to talk my head off on things and try to really b beat me down when I want to do something my way no. on my weekend. It's only one hour out of the day, the session. I see my and daughter. And you couldn't I make that happen? Every other weekend. I'm trying to take one hour out of every other one weekend. One hour is nothing out of a whole and entire weekend. And it's 45 minutes away from my house. Judge Hatchett's verdict when we return. You gave her your word that you were going to do it. I think that he's got to have more flexibility on his weekends about this. I agree. I absolutely believe that you are trying to do the right thing. <laughs> because it is easier to correct an issue about weight and nutrition and eating habits mm -hmm. at 12 than it is at 42 after somebody has had a heart attack. You're going to pay her $350, $35 a session for the 10 sessions that you all missed. Mm -hmm. But she is going to be responsible for taking your daughter. That's not going to be on you anymore, but you're going to pay for those other sessions, mm -hmm. right? All right. And then you are going to text her, although I prefer that you call her, but you're going to text her and tell her, this is what we're doing, or this is what we did this weekend, so that she has some reassurance that, you know, you and your daughter are really committed to this whole piece of fitness. Judgment for the plaintiff for $350. So ordered. Thank you, Judge. All rise. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $350. It's unfortunate that we had to come to court today over our daughter being bullied about her weight, but I'm happy that Judge Hatchett could work it out for us. You know I love our daughter, and I never put our health in jeopardy.